Scarring of the lungs that makes it hard to breathe. Duke NUS researchers say this condition, known as pulmonary fibrosis, is on the rise as the population ages. They have also found that blocking two proteins could reduce scarring. Now, for more, I have with me Associate Professor Manvendra Kumar Singh, an author of the study from Duke NUS. Professor Singh, it's good to see you here in the studio with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, so, for a start, tell us more about this disease. What happens when someone is suffering from it, and how does it affect a person's quality of life? So, people suffering from pulmonary fibrosis, they have difficulty in breathing because the lung is injured and fibrotic. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they can feel like, you no know, uh, out of breath. Shortness of breath is, is one of the symptoms because the lung is impaired because of the injury and fibrosis. So the amount of oxygen it is supposed to, to take it from the air is not able to do that. Okay. And in severe cases, what people, people can, can uh, really, uh, it can affect people's like daily life like regular walking, doing exercising, doing groceries. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's a very severe condition. What causes lung tissue to stiffen in the first place? And is fibrosis reversible? No, so fibrosis is not reversible, unfortunately. Most of the drug uh, aimed at, at like treating fibrosis, mm -hmm. they try to slow down the progression of fibrosis. Uh, the cause of fibrosis is like any tissue injury when the lung is injured because of a chemical exposure, because of pollution or because of a viral infection. Mm -hmm. It causes inflammation and inflammation leads to, 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 uh, to fibrotic response because the cytokines which are secreted from macrophages like immune cells, they affect the transformation of a cells, cell type which is known as fibroblast in the lung. Mm -hmm. They transform into myofibroblast and myofibroblast can secrete. They have ability to secrete collagen or extracellular matrix. And when this matrix is deposited in, in the alve uh, around the alveoli mm -hmm. in, the, in the lung, the heart cannot, ca cannot breathe or cannot expand. So it becomes stiff. Right. And it is... It, it causes shortness of breath, yes. dry cough, yes. and fatigue as well, as you said. And we understand that cases are on the rise, on the rise because the population is aging. But are seniors the only ones susceptible to it? Who else is at risk? So, so um, COVID has shown that everybody can be at risk, risk mm -hmm. because all the adult, all, all the different age group of people, when they got infected with COVID, they have potential to develop pulmonary fibrosis. And there was a recent meta-analysis um, which suggests that as large as like 45% of the population who were infected with COVID-19 can develop pulmonary fibrosis. Oh, apart from, you know, um, the COVID, the effects of COVID, right? What else uh, are the causes of it? Is it down to lifestyle, stress? Is it the food that we eat also? I mean, the primary, I mean, they have not been uh, associated directly with lung fibrosis. Mm. Of course, unhealthy lifestyle can, can create a lot of, uh, no, um, a lot of conditions, mm. uh, chronic conditions. Uh, there was a recent study, a Singapore-based study showed that like, no, uh, most of the, uh, like 50% of the patients uh, by the age of 45 to 50, they develop at least four chronic conditions. Uh, so, so, so definitely lifestyle uh, improvement could help, mm -hmm. but two important factors are the age. Age is associated risk factor in this condition and considering we are an aging population, Singapore, like, no, um, a lot of uh, seniors could be at risk who are uh, in the age of 50 plus uh, age group. And they I could suppose be at risk. smoking as well. Smoke. Uh, yes, smoking and vaping uh, are, uh, have been shown to be associated with pulmonary fibrosis. Mm, uh, Professor Singh, your team at the Duke NUS Medical School uh, has made headway in finding new ways to treat this disease involving the two proteins uh, that we mentioned. Uh, tell us more about your study. Uh, so what we have done is we have used mouse as a model system and what we have found um, that in case of lung injury or in case of pulmonary fibrosis, these two proteins, they are activated in immune cells like macrophages. And, and the activation of these proteins 
affect the fibroblast transformation from fibro fibroblast to myofibro myofibroblast, mm. uh, leading to more fibrosis. So what we have shown in using a genetic model that when you delete these two protein or you remove from the from the animal, there is a reduction in fibrosis. But when we make this 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 protein in excess amount, that could lead to more fibrosis. So what we think is like manipulating the balance or expression of these, these molecules mm. in, in, in lung injury could be very helpful to control the fibrotic event. And how far are we from this becoming a treatment option for patients? So, so we are still in discovery and preclinical stage. Mm -hmm. It takes like 10 to 15 years to translate a discovery into treatment. Uh, so, so we are in early stage of, of discovery. Uh, but the good news is that the inhibitor for these two proteins are already in, in going to be in, in phase three clinical trial for a, a specific cancer, mesothelial cancer in, in United States. So we can think of uh, repurposing those mm. uh, into pulmonary fibrosis treatment. All right. Um, all the best, Professor Singh. Thank you so much for coming in to speak with us tonight. Uh, that was Associate Professor Manvendra Kumar Singh from Duke NUS Medical School.